Hello there, Star Wars fans. For those of you that are returning. <laughs> How you doing, you old pirate? So good to see you. And for those of you that are new here. Well, took you long enough. Welcome to the channel, everybody. Let's get into today's video. And today we're going to be talking all about Force Ghosts, or Force Spirits as they're technically called in canon. And we're going to be talking about Qui-Gon, Obi-Wan, Yoda, Anakin, Luke, Leia, all canon Force Ghosts. How do they become ghosts? What are their limitations, their powers, etc. Going to get into it all. And it's an extremely complicated subject that we still don't have a ton of canon information on. Even Legends is very lacking for the most part on a lot of information about these force ghosts so i'm gonna also include my own theories my own thoughts what i've put together through research watching and just what i truly think about them hey everybody interjecting on my own video the reason i'm making this one is because i'm actually i've pretty much finished writing and i'm gonna record a what if qui-gon spoke to anakin after his fall to the dark side it does go against some canon stuff but i think it's a really interesting theory really interesting what if fan fiction that will be re releasing tomorrow. So, stay tuned for that. I think it's going to be one of my better ones. I'm super excited for it. Alright, back to my video now. But we do know how they come to be and why only some Jedi are able to become Force Ghosts. Now, in The Rise of Skywalker, we do hear the voices of many Jedi, including Mace Windu, Ahsoka Tano, just countless Jedi, truly. Not all of them are Force Ghosts. I just... We know Mace Windu's not. We know at least Ahsoka is not dead up to that point. So that's a whole different thing. But Force Ghosts, to become them, like the ones we do see, must be trained by the Shaman of the Wills or be chosen by the Force. We know Qui-Gon, Yoda, and Obi-Wan all passed the trials and training. And I also believe did have to be chosen by the Force. I don't believe Kit Fisto could have just shown up and been like, I want to be... A force ghost. I think he may have actually been denied by the Shaman of the Wills. I think you had to be extremely powerful in the light side and extremely significant in the eyes of the Force, if that makes sense. But we know those three, Qui-Gon, Yoda, and Obi-Wan, passed the trials, passed the training. But Anakin, he became one without the training. It is my belief, and through the research I've done, I believe it's because Anakin was manifested by the Force to be the Chosen One. And because he eventually did complete his destiny with his redemption, he was able to become a Force Ghost through the will of the Force. And these, again, Force Ghosts are extremely complicated, but that's what I gathered with my research, my theories. I think he was chosen at his death, along with Obi-Wan coming to him as Vader slash Anakin died, and kind of giving him some training, some very quick training, but as we know, he didn't have nearly enough time to go through the Shaman of the Wills training, so I think he was largely chosen by the Force. Let me know your thoughts on that. I very much enjoy talking with you all in the comments. It's great to have these conversations. It's a large part of why I do this channel, just to talk with Star Wars fans as a member of the fandom myself. It's a lot of fun, so let me know your thoughts on the Anakin Force Ghost. Anyways, moving on, only through the light side of the Force can beings become force ghosts or transfer their conscious minds and bodies to the afterlife with energy from the living force flowing into the cosmic force we know sith right they want to become immortal palpatine talked about it plaguey has talked about it anakin slash vader definitely talked about it and they could sort of do it they dreamt of immortality but not in the way that the jedi could do it rather plaguey sidious vader even focused solely on remaining immortal in life rather than continuing life after death. The Sith, like Plagueis, he wanted to just live forever. He wanted to conquer death. And, and they focus, because of this, they focus much more of their energy on essence transfer, where as they died, their consciousness could transfer to a new host. But this was extremely risky. It rarely worked if the opposing mind was able to resist. And it was done by Sith as early as the Sith Empire. And we saw it, or we know it happened with Emperor v uh, Vitaly, Darth Bane, and of course, Darth Sidious. We saw the risks firsthand with Sidious, who struggled to create a worthy host, and then the dark side disintegration of his clone was massive. But yeah, they're not allowed, or they cannot become force ghosts, just a light side ability. The Sith have their own powers, but 
becoming Force Ghost is not one of them. The Sith version was much more brutal, of course, but back to the Jedi, Force Ghosts. Now, we know Qui-Gon trained before his death to transfer his conscious mind to the death, but did not or could not actually communicate with the living until late in the Clone Wars, and couldn't manifest his body until sometime after the Empire took over, likely focusing on his training much more after the fall of Anakin. So this wasn't a super easy thing. The Sith had their essence transfer, which was very difficult, and the Jedi had becoming a Force Ghost, also difficult to completely master. Qui-Gon got about, got about halfway before his death, and trained more after his death. That's super interesting, I hope we get this, I'd love like, I don't know, maybe another Tales of the Jedi, or just its own animated thing where we focus on stories of Force Ghosts, Qui-Gon training in the afterlife, Obi-Wan training on Tatooine, Anakin's journey right before he died, like, inside of his mind. I would love to see that kind of stuff. What about you? Do you want to see something like that, or do you want it to remain a mystery? Because I, I could go with both ways. But anyway, that's what Qui-Gon did. He couldn't actually communicate right away, he couldn't manifest his body right away because he hadn't completed the training, but he was there and was able to eventually speak with Yoda, Obi-Wan, and even manifest himself as we saw in the show. On the other hand, both Yoda and Obi-Wan trained enough to let their fourth spirit become both mind and body immediately after their death. And you may be wondering, you may have seen in, you know, the original trilogy. Obi-Wan dies, Yoda dies, in the sequels, Luke dies, Leia dies, their bodies disappear. Qui-Gon dies, though, in the prequels, and his body does not disappear. Vader dies and becomes a Force ghost, his body does not disappear. Why? Well, I think the bodies of Obi-Wan, or I know the bodies of Obi-Wan, Yoda, Luke, Leia disappear because their body and mind were both transferred to the afterlife, to the Force, while Qui-Gon's body was not, just his mind, so his body stuck around, and I think theory on Vader is that Vader's body stayed because that was not the part of him that was moving on. If that was Anakin's body, I mean, I guess it technically is, but you know, got to come up with our theories, right? If that makes sense, I think Anakin's body or Vader's body stuck around just because that was not the body or the the look of him that would transfer on to becoming a Force ghost. As we know, the look that Anakin took on as a Force ghost was that of him in Revenge of the Sith before his fall. So that's interesting, and yeah, that's why the bodies disappear or do not disappear. But one of the biggest questions with Force ghosts, why don't they just appear all the time? Why don't they fight battles, describe the future... Just be way overpowered, you know? Why doesn't Qui-Gon come to Yoda and be like, Hey, Anakin's about to turn to the dark side, you should go stab him real quick. <laughs> First of all, because... <laughs> it's a funny theory. Or, I don't know. <laughs> That'd be kind of funny. Anyways. First answer, because that would undermine everything all the time and make for very boring movies and TV. Second answer, and the more canon and my belief on the matter. The four spirits are one with the force and they must obey the way of the Force. They can guide Jedi, they can be around, they can give advice, but they cannot interfere on pivotal moments. We see this clearly, I think, with Obi-Wan on Dagobah. He's talking to Luke, and Luke is preparing to leave to go save his friends after getting that vision. But Obi-Wan tells him if he goes to help his friends and fight Vader, then Obi-Wan cannot interfere. Luke's just kind of like, dang, okay, and both of the Jedi are kind of bewildered. But that's, I think, the rule of the Force Spirits, Force Ghosts. Because like anything else, there have to be rules to, that come with it. They're dead, they're in a new realm, so I think they may only advise. And we know they're powerful, right? Obi-Wan said to Vader, If you kill me, I shall become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. There's truth to the statement from Obi-Wan, but the power is in the Force, rather than physical power while alive that of which the Sith crave. The power is in the Force. With Force ghosts, what happens in the timeline of the galaxy must happen as it's supposed to. The Force is meant to balance itself out. That's why it created Anakin Skywalker, the Chosen One. And as Qui-Gon said in the Clone Wars, there is no future or no past in the realm of the Force ghosts exist in. They can guide, but they cannot interfere. Whatever's going to happen, the most pivotal moments, the Force Ghosts can try to sway, or not, I shouldn't say sway, but just guide the Jedi on their path. 
guide the Jedi on how to best use the light side of the Force. But they can't just jump in and, you know, kill Darth Vader on Bespin. <laughs> Again, it'd be funny little animated what-ifs or something if, you know, Luke's fighting Vader and it gets his hand cut off and Yoda's just like, or Obi-Wan's just like, no, and then kills him as a ghost. No, that'd be boring and weird. But anyways, just to recap, I, th I hope this made sense, by the way. I know I kind of jumped around, made some jokes, but uh, hope this made sense. Force ghosts are extremely complicated. But yeah, I enjoyed talking about it today. And just to recap, only light side users can become force ghosts. And they must either be chosen by the force, train with the wills, or both. They can guide, but not directly interfere as it would be disobeying the force, the very thing that allows the force ghosts to exist. So let me know, what are your thoughts on force ghosts? The lore is all over the place for the most part, but you can kind of make your own theories and just, I've come to the conclusion that they have to obey the Force. There are rules. They can't, again, just jump in and Yoda can't just be like, hey, Luke, go to Exegol, dude. Maybe. <laughs> again, it's very funny to think about, but yeah, that's what I think about it. I think it's an extremely interesting topic, and I do hope it's explored more on the screen. I know in books... If you guys don't know, I think there's books, or I know there's books, where Luke and Anakin, the Force Ghost of Anakin, actually team up for a little bit. And I just, I don't know, I didn't read it. It's not, maybe I will eventually, but it's just not my type of thing right now. We'll see, we'll see. If you found that super interesting, if you read that book where Anakin appears to Luke, I think it was on Exegol, I don't know the whole lore, so I'm just not even going to pretend to talk about it. Anyways comment your thoughts, leave a like, please do consider subscribing to help grow this daily Star Wars community. I appreciate each and every one of you. We're continuously growing pretty quickly. I do appreciate it. It's awesome to see. Thank you. Sincerely. All right, and I will see you in the next video.